How's it going everyone? This is James from James Films and hey, you can now see me. For this tutorial, I've got my webcam on. I've got my microphone here ready to go and we're gonna be having a lot of fun making a cool landscape environment using World Creator and then bringing what we create in World Creator over into Blender to make it look pretty and really nice. So for these tutorials, I'm trying to release them a bit more regularly. I know I get a lot of questions for people asking me to release these on a more regular basis and I'm trying my best to put stuff out there. But in order to do that, I actually need a little bit of help from you, the viewer. If you have an idea for a tutorial or there's something that you want to learn uh, based on a render that I put out on Instagram or even here on YouTube, leave a comment in the description and tell me what you'd like to see. I got a lot of comments on my last video uh, with some people requesting some tutorials and someone had requested another World Creator tutorial. Uh, I've done a couple of these in the past before. I've linked some of those videos in the description here if you want to check them out. This is one that I'm going to be kind of doing a bit more detailed step-by-step -step for a mountain building process. But if you've got a tutorial in mind, leave the comment in the description and I'll try my best to get you and create a tutorial. So just a, a bit of caution here, World of Creator is not a free piece of software, um, but the stuff that I'm going to be generating here in World Creator, I will make free available to you to download on my website. You can get that linked in the description there. What you're going to be getting is the uh, displacement texture, so you can actually displace your terrain, make mountains as well as uh, the masks that I'm going to be using for the texture creation process. So you'll get all those nicely zipped up on my website. So check that out there. Yeah, uh, if you want to support me for just a little bit of extra a month, uh, you can go over to my Patreon, which is linked in the description, and I release the blend files for all my tutorials over there. Uh, so you can access those there if you want to have them uh, for your reference. I also try to release fairly regularly these texture map files for displacement maps for mountains and other terrains over there on my Patreon as well as some other goodies here and there too, and some Patreon exclusive tutorials. So your support is always awesome to have and it's what keeps me going making these tutorials and I'm just having a lot of fun seeing you guys creating these stuff uh, from the tutorials over on your own Instagram or ArtStation accounts. So keep up with that, I love seeing it, um, but let's get to, to the tutorial here. So I've got World Creator fired up here and what you'll notice is it already comes with kind of like a default terrain, if you will. You've got kind of initial displacements of this terrain here to form some mountains. Uh, and you'll see, well, how do you modify this? How do you change it? There's no sculpt brush or anything here. Well, if you go over to the base properties tab under the surface menu, there is this custom base shape properties and you just have to click that on. And now it gives you this option to edit the shape and you can click that and it gives you all these diamonds. The number of diamonds that you see corresponds to the terrain width and terrain length of your scene here. So I'm currently at the default 2048 by 2048. If I were to go up to 4096, it's much larger you see we get now eight by eight diamonds to play around with the modifier terrain, which is a lot more detailed. So sometimes you wanna go for this. I think this is kind of a helpful one to work off of. So we'll, we'll start with the 4K one for now. A bit of caution if you go a little bit higher to 8,192 or even beyond that to 16,384, you're gonna be adding a lot of geometry to your scene. With older computers, this could become an issue because you could be running out of memory uh, with the number of polygons that you have in your scene. So just, just keep an eye out for that. I honestly don't think you need that much geometry because you can actually do this really nice thing where you're in the seamless properties here and you can check on seamless X and seamless Z. And what this actually does is it makes your terrain seamless as the name implies. So if you were to just duplicate this a whole bunch of times, it would look as if there's just this large mountain range. And this part on the right here would link up seamlessly with what you see here on the left side. So it's infinitely tileable, which is really nice if you're just duplicating this over and over. So we're actually gonna be doing that probably uh, in our final scene. So I'm just gonna check that on. And I'm gonna kind of want some kind of mountain here in the center. So you can kind of just roughly pull up these diamonds here or push them down. Uh, the fall off is, is kind of nice and smooth. I want that to be nice and smooth with these ones. And then maybe I bring down the edges over here a bit on the sides. Um, you'll see it's kind of taking a second to refresh here. There's a little bit of glitching up and down, but it is loading this in real time, which is really awesome to be able to do this kind of stuff in real time. Um, the controls are a bit different from Blender, so I'm actually using my middle mouse button to move back and forth, and then the right mouse button to kind of pan up and down here. Uh, so that is what you're seeing. There's no screencast keys here to show you that, but it's helpful to kind of zoom down here so you can kind of see the height of this mountain that you're generating. You don't want it to be too you know, stretched out vertically like this where you're getting a lot of you know, artifacts here because of just how stretched it is and it's trying to interpolate over such a large distance. So I'm just gonna kind of bring this down a bit here and, and make it a bit uh, smoother fall off of this mountain. Um, I'm gonna kind of pan around here again. Let's just grab this diamond. It's a little bit hard to reach from that angle. Gotcha, there we go. So again, this nice smooth fall off from these things. 
and and take your time with this. I always come back and revisit this throughout the process too. This is what's great about this. It's all procedurally generated. So you can kind of keep coming back and revisiting your terrain as you build onto it. So it's not locking you into anything in particular, which is really nice to have that flexibility when you're working in general. I think that's really what makes a lot of this artwork so easy to do is just having that reproducibility, having that procedural uh, aspect to it, which is really awesome. Um, so once I'm happy with this shape, I can hit done editing shape and that kind of clicks it into this place for right now. And this is where the magic really starts. So if I go over to this next tab here, the filters tab, and hit add layer, and then go to the filters here and you can hit add, you have a whole host of really awesome filters that you can add on to really add an interesting aspect to the train. You can do all kinds of erosions. Uh, so you can do like, I don't know, this kind of river bed erosion, deep erosion. You can do, uh, you know, wind erosion as if it's been like swept by wind over centuries or, you know, millennia. It's, it's really cool to do that. There's even this advanced erosion, so you've got angled, hydro, talus, simulation, lots of really cool things to choose from. And it's really cool because you can kind of build them on top of each other as if they're like Photoshop layers. So you're kind of having these custom blend modes and you're controlling those blend modes in these filter properties tabs here. So you can kind of control the general strength of it. You can kind of pull that up and down, you know, variety of parameters like move speed, movement threshold. A lot of these you can just kind of pull and push and just see how they work for your scene, how they, you know, affect your terrain differently. And then if you want to just add another one, so let me actually just start with a bit of erosion here just off the bat with this mountain here. I'm just going to do, let's see, let's just do the basic erosion here and just kind of pull its strength down quite a bit just to show you what this is looking like. So I've got this kind of soft erosion to the mountain. What I can do is hit add. And so now if I were to go back, you see we have this erosion layer here now on our map. And now I can just add in another filter. So let's add in more of like a mountainous filter to this. So if we go to, let's see, what if we go to plateaus? We can see this, we've got this rocky plateau, we got clean plateaus, maybe not that one, let's do ridged. So this is what I'm looking for. I really like how this looks. We've got this nice mountain ridge. You can see really, really clearly defined mountain peak, which looks really nice. You know, from a distance, this is looking really clean, really nice, really cool uh, kind of fall off to these hills as well as you go down. It looks super natural uh, and really realistic, honestly. It's really neat to see. So what I'm going to do is hit add and close. And let's just work with these two filters to start out with here. So if you were to wanting to control the effect of these, you can actually select specifically where that filter is applied uh, by doing it uh, a cavity here. So you can have it convexly applied. So it's only applying uh, on the outer portions here. Or you can do concave where it's kind of in the inner kind of bends of our terrain here. So that's an interesting feature if you want to kind of do that as well. You can also do a noise selection. So this is just kind of applying a noise. You can scale it up and it, you can see it's a, only applying at the specific noise frequency, which is interesting too. You can also do a height select and kind of pull up where it is relative to the ocean where that fall off is happening. Uh, this can be a little bit finicky sometimes pulling with these sliders. Uh, so you can see kind of how it's affecting their roll off. It's kind of an interesting effect there. Um, usually I don't play around with these too much because I think kind of the default profiles for a lot of these really makes it look magical already off the bat. So I think it's already a pretty good start with this. I'm noticing that this peak is a little bit sharp up here. So I'm going to go back to the base properties, edit the shape, and let's just pull this guy down just a little bit. And that's the beauty of that procedural texture is you can revisit these guys, like I was saying, and kind of make it look different or, you know, modified a bit. So it's looking a bit more natural. You can kind of just pan around the scene here too. And that's looking pretty good to me. I think we're already off to a really good start here. And again, this is just, I, I like to have a lot of fun in here. You can just kind of keep moving different things around, adding different filters and just seeing what effects you get. Honestly, it's kind of like Bob Ross always says, happy accidents. Oftentimes I'm just playing around with an erosion filter or some kind of filter and something just kind of clicks and it's like, hey, that looks pretty cool. And you can kind of keep pursuing it, refining it. And it's just a lot of fun. So just really enjoy doing this and, and take the time to kind of mess around and experience what you want to do with this guy. Um, so I'm going to add in one more filter here just to kind of have an extra little effect here. Don't necessarily know what I'm going for with this. It's an interesting kind of Dune effect here. I uh, did a Dune tutorial in World Creator actually recently, uh, if you want to check that out too. Um, but let's just add in, I like how this canyon eroded looks. Let's just maybe bring the strength down just a little bit. We kind of have this like almost deserty looking landscape to it, which looks pretty interesting. So I'll add that and close. And let me go to the erosion and kind of bring this guy back a bit too. So that's looking really nice. And now is the time where we're actually gonna do kind of like a pre-texturing in World Crater. 
they have a couple textures that you can load in, built into it. So if I go over this paintbrush, it's the textures tab. And then add layer, take a second here. And then you can hit add. And then I'm just gonna load in my world creator directory. And you see they've got a couple like custom tutorials that they have, or custom textures rather, that they already have that come with world creator, which personally I don't know if they're the best, I don't really end up using these, but these kind of help out as masks initially uh, to kind of give me an idea for where the specific textures will be uh, on my, my image or on my object. And then I kind of use other textures, either from Blender Market or from you know Blender Kit, which is built into Blender, which we'll be doing for this tutorial, or from Quixel, and you can add those in based on the masks that you generate in World Creator right here. So I like to usually add in textures that have really high contrast, really big difference between each other. It's not as helpful if you're adding in, like say, all of these grasses because they're all fairly similar in color. So it's gonna be kind of hard to distinguish where the texture is gonna be falling. You know, it's almost preferable to use, let's say this dirt one, I'm gonna add this on right here. And then let's add in, um, I don't know, a snow one or something here, just so it's a really big difference you can see between those two, uh, between these two textures. And now what we're gonna be doing is blending these in an interesting way uh, so that we can use them, uh, the masks that we generated from these over in Blender. So to modify these guys, you can scroll all the way down here and you have these texture distribution properties. And we can actually have this do is similar to what we were doing with those filters before. You can have them be either concave or convex. So now if you put it as convex, you can see it's kind of on these nice height peaks, almost as if it was like snow that had fallen on the mountain. Uh, if I increase the steps a bit here, you see it kind of smooths it out a little bit more over that terrain, uh, which I kind of like a bit. Um, increasing that step size, kind of increases the resolution of it. So you see it's like very small noise here, so it's almost completely distributed. If I pull this up here, it's kind of blobbier, larger noise value that it's applying. You can also increase the strength, so it's just kind of a little bit more scattered on this mountain. You can do flow enabled, so it's kind of almost in those like cavities of that like erosion texture that we had there, which is kind of interesting too. Maybe not necessarily the effect we're going for, but I can kind of tweak this a bit here to kind of add a little bit more noise to it and make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm kind of just trying to plug this hole that's over here. You can kind of see this weird gap. It looks like there should be some kind of snow on the peak there. Um, so let's kind of play around with that a bit and see what we can do uh, to kind of get that a bit more uh, applied. And maybe what I do for that is actually do a height select and kind of pull this guy up. Let me just increase this to something kind of extreme, like 2500, and pull this water level one up quite a bit here. Let's pull this up to something positive. Let's like 200. So now it's looking a bit more normal. So I maybe want to smooth this out a bit so I can do the height smoothness. So it kind of blends a little bit better so it's not as steep a transition because you probably won't have snow necessarily in these like lower regions down there. Um, so let's just have the snow kind of up in the peaks a bit. Smooth it out a bit more. Looks pretty nice. And then I kind of want to maybe have this a bit more stepped up there. It's looking pretty good. And then I can do slope select here. So it's like almost just at the top peaks there. It's looking really nice to me. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, so we kind of have this like snow, snowy peak all the way up there. It's maybe a little bit sharp still. Let's kind of smooth that out a bit more. So that's looking decent, I think. I kind of like how that's looking, spreading on my mountain there. Kind of got like an interesting effect to it. Maybe it's a, still a little bit too like minimalistic of the snow. So you can kind of play around this a bit more. You can also add it to just the sediment surfaces itself, which is kind of interesting effect. I think maybe it's not showing up as much here because this is a little bit too steep. So once again, since this is procedural, let's just go back to our base properties here and just edit the shape just a little bit. So if I pull this guy up a bit here, it will probably blend a bit better into my scene. So now you see we have all these layers it's fighting through. So it's, it's slowing down a little bit here, um, but it's just taking a second to load. In real time here, you can see it's, it's just kind of generating what this looks like. And there we go, that's uh, it's looking a bit better. Again, this is all a pull and push. Um, no sense rushing through this. I'm kind of moving a bit quicker because this is for this tutorial, but you know, usually you'd spend a little bit more time kind of going through and, and making it look you know prim and proper and kind of locking in your, your scene. Now it's kind of, lagging a little bit, but there we go. Um, so yeah, so this is, I think, looking like a decent start to me. I think this is kind of a good thing to work off of. So 
now comes the, the question of how do you get this from over in, uh, in, Blend or in World Creator over to Blender? And the way to do that is to go to your Export Properties tab here. And you've got a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to export out of World Creator. Um, I've had a couple issues in the past exporting like a PNG uh, from World Creator to Blender. You get kind of this weird like artifacting. And I looked into it a bit and there's some issues with the encoding of the file of the PNG. So it's kind of having issues and almost like making this kind of weird patterned noise in the displacement map that you bring it to Blender. So typically I've had the most success actually just exporting out an EXR for the displacement. And so you're gonna have terrain height map selected. You can export that out to wherever you want. And then you're gonna go over to textures or actually rather to heat maps and you can select textures from the heat maps. And it's just by default selected these two. And these ones you can export as anything. Usually I will just go for PNG or JPEG for these. And these are gonna be our masks. So they're gonna export those two heat maps and export uh, the terrain height map. All right, we are over in Blender now. I'm gonna turn on these screencast keys just so you see what we're doing here. And now I'm going to just delete everything here. And what we're gonna be using to displace is a plane. So I'm just gonna add in the plane here. Let's just scale it up by you know 10 just so we have a nice large plane to work with. And I'm gonna add some initial subdivisions to this as well. Let's add in two cuts and then let's give it 50 here. Um, so what we're gonna actually wanna to do to displace this is you could do this one of two ways. You could import the displacement if you're using cycles as the shader and displace it that way. But actually what I like to do is use uh, modifiers. So I actually add in a subdivision surface and then also add in a displace modifier. And so in the viewport, you can keep your levels down uh, as low as possible for your computer just to kind of make sure that you're still responsive with this. And oftentimes I'll check this on and off. Uh, so I'm just gonna check this off for now and then hit in a new texture make it for the UV because this UV is just gonna be this plane here. Click on the little sliders that are here and then we're gonna open. So I'm just gonna import that height map, that EXR as my texture. And if I open it up, you'll see we've got this texture loaded in and it's looking really blocky and that's because those subdivisions are currently turned off. But we're gonna actually wanna turn this displacement up quite a bit. It's defaulted to just one as the strength, but I'm gonna bring that up there and then turn the mid level to zero. So now it's in line with our XY plane. Uh, so that's looking quite nice. Um, it's again, very blocky, but if I turn on the subdivision surface, you'll see already with just one cut, it's already looking a lot less blocky, which is really nice. And once we start bringing in textures, it's gonna look even cooler. And remember we had that tiling, well, that's pretty great. So to tile this, what I'm gonna do is do Alt D. So I'm not duplicating too much of this geometry and then pull this over on the X axis so that it is uh, in line with this right portion here. And you'll see that's, linking up pretty well. You'll see a little bit of a seam there, but that's gonna be kind of ironed out once, ooh, I think I accidentally lifted this up a bit here. Yeah, I did lift it up. There we go, now that's in line. So now you can see it's it's seamless. Um, so it's, it's actually linking between this and there's like a little bit of a, a seam there that you see, but that's gonna be ironed out once you actually look through the viewport. So I can kind of make this interesting angle to it here. And what I like to do is kind of define my camera viewpoint pretty early on. Uh, so for this one, I'm actually going to be going with a, uh, keeping it with the dimensions of uh, 1920 by 1080. It kind of defaults within Blender here, but to kind of make it a little bit grander, let's add in a bit of a wider focal, like, like 24 millimeters or something that like that. I'm going to drag this over uh, to the right there so I can actually see through the camera there. Sometimes the camera gets kind of rotated by like a weird angle when you do that. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit here and let's like bring it in a little bit. And to kind of be able to just, sometimes I get distracted by what's surrounding outside the camera to kind of limit that, I go down to the viewport display and then turn up the uh, passepartout all the way up. So it's kind of limiting it. So you're just seeing that. And you can kind of keep duplicating these around a bit just to kind of define your scene. I'm gonna kind of have this like mistiness of the mountains way in the back there. And to kind of make it look a little bit different because you can see these peaks kind of look similar you can just kind of rotate a little bit here, move around, maybe scale it up a bit. So we kind of have this like mountain range that we're starting to build with these textures and just keep hitting Alt and D and it just keeps duplicating these mountains around a lot. And these ones don't need to have as much subdivision since they're so far out in the background. You're not really gonna necessarily notice them per se. So I'm just kind of moving these up and, and kind of changing the, the rotation a bit so that they look a little bit different in the scene. So that's looking pretty nice. And you'll see this is kind of snapping off there into the distance. And that's because we have clipping on in our camera set a little bit too close. So if I go to the camera properties tab, 
you see this clip start, clip end. I'm going to just crank the clip end up like to something crazy high. So we're not really worrying about that anymore. And we can just kind of have our mountains way off in the distance there, just filling this frame out. That's looking pretty nice. So that is really cool. Um, so there's our scene uh, and we're done. That's it. <laughs> no, let's go through the texture in here and actually uh, give a little bit more life to our scene. Uh, so to actually start out here, I'm just going to turn on uh, rendering in, in Eevee just so we're kind of a little bit more responsive. Uh, since there's a lot of subdivisions, uh, you might be fighting through a lot of noise if you're using something like Cycles. Uh, I'm also going to add in an HDRI and I've linked the HDRI I'm using for this one in the description of this video. It's one from HDRI Skies that I think works really well. Uh, kind of gives us this nice like kind of golden hour hue to our scene. If you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can go and click on the HDRI image in your world uh, texture tab. Just hit Control T and it adds in a mapping and texture coordinate node, which will then allow us to kind of rotate this guy around so it's hitting our scene where we want the light. I kind of like how that's looking. You almost have this like sunrise on the mountain here, which looks really cool. Um, and just to make sure that the uh, the parts of our scene are, are where we want them to be. What I often like to do is turn on show overlays, click on my camera tab again, and then go down to the composition guides. This might be kind of cropped off depending on how this is showing in my screen recorder, but you want to check on the rule of thirds and center. And this gives you these nice guiding lines. So you kind of get an idea for compositionally where you want things to be in your scene. And what I'm noticing is that this uh, mountain, the sun, I kind of want to be on this like intersection point that you see uh, right here in the scene. That's where I want the sun to be because it's just compositionally that will work, I think, really well and look like a really nice landscape photos if you're actually taking this uh, with, a, with a digital camera uh, or film camera if you're into film cameras. Um, so let me just kind of move our mountain over a little bit here, maybe a little bit closer to our scene. It's looking pretty nice. Let's move that over there and move this guy over just a little bit. And then let's rotate this just a hair more. And now we've got the sun where we want it to be. I can you know, put the rotation up a bit. Let me make this like negative 0.05. That's uh, a little bit too high still, negative 0.02. It's decent. And that's looking pretty good to me. If I turn off the overlays again, you see we've got this nice kind of sun coming through there. I don't really like how the background looks. So I'm just gonna actually turn that off uh, by going over to film and then checking on transparent. And it's a little bit dim still, you can see. Um, if I turn this up to four, I think the strength is a little bit better. And what I'm actually going to do is actually add in a sun lamp. Uh, I like to kind of define my lighting early on. I, I, I will still do kind of like push and pull with it as we get later on to the composition. But I really think that the light should often be what guides your composition. Uh, it should be, you know, directing your eye through the scene, kind of telling you a visual story. Uh, and this is kind of what I start with with my background with photography. You know, you're always looking with photography where the light is going to be guiding the viewer's eye in the scene. You're trying to find interesting ways how it frames the scene, how it gives life to the scene, uh, and will bring you through it. So I take the same approach, same philosophy with 3D work as well. I often like to start at least with some kind of preliminary lighting setup just to kind of guide you through the scene that you're creating. Because uh, I really think the lighting is the most important aspect in a lot of scenes. And it's a lot of the times what beginners will fail on because you don't spend enough time with it. You don't spend enough uh, you know, energy actually making sure that it's dialed in property, properly and looks really good. Uh, and it's often as simple as just adding in an HDRI with a sun lamp uh, to the, a lot of these scenes, especially outdoor landscape scenes. You can really make it uh, really look pretty nice with just a few clicks, just a few lights. And then if you need to, you can dial it in with other area lights or point lights uh, to kind of further guide your eye through the scene. So I'm just gonna add in this sun lamp here and I'm gonna you know, angle it so it's kind of in line with where our uh, HDRI was kind of splashing on the scene. So it's like kind of a harsh angle here and like maybe a little bit higher there. Let me crank up the brightness on this just so I see where it's it's hitting actually. And I'm gonna give it a bit of a orangish tint to it. Let's crank this up a bit more. So you can see now where that's hitting in my scene. So if I angle this a little bit more, turn it there. It's looking pretty good. And there we go. Okay, so now let's get to texturing of the landscapes. And this is where we're gonna be using those, um, those heat maps that you generated before. So I'm just gonna hit new texture and we'll call this our mountain. And so what I'm gonna do for this guy is, uh, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can do um, one of two things. If you have a texture that you've already downloaded from somewhere online, you can use that. 
Uh, for this one, let's just use some that are built into Blender already, which is Blender Kit. Uh, it's got a really nice add-on here that's free with Blender. It comes with a materials tab where you can actually search for by specific categories, materials uh, in Blender. So for this one, I'm gonna be using like a snowy one. So they've got like kind of a like ice or snow here. You can just search by snow as well too. So I'm just gonna search snow. Okay, so we got some nice snowy textures to work with here. And so I'm, I'm gonna add in a new slot here and let's load up one of these snow textures into our scene. Uh, maybe we do, let's see, scroll through, kind of take stock of what we've got to work with. Uh, we've got some kind of ones that are more designed maybe for like a close up thing. I'm gonna want one that kind of tiles nice and well. So maybe we go for, uh, you know, snow, stylized snow two here. So if I click that one to load it up, it's gonna load it up into the second slot of my textures. Take a second to load. Okay, so now we have this in our second slot of the texture. I'm gonna select all of this and then hit Control and J and add it to a new frame. We're gonna call this our snow. And let's give it a color, uh, like a nice bright snowy white color. I'm gonna load up the second texture, which will be kind of like a rocky texture. So they actually have like a nice rock thing that here that you can look for. And this first one actually looks pretty promising already. So I actually might not even need to go further, but you can kind of see what other ones they have to offer. They've got quite a few really nice ones that people have made uh, on the Blender market or, or elsewhere that you know work really well with your scene. So I'm gonna just bring this guy in here. It's kind of like grayish rock. It'll take a second to load up and now we have it in our scene here. I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I hit Control J, add it to a new frame. That I'm gonna call our rock. And then I'm gonna add like kind of a rocky brown color to it. So now this is where the magic happens. This is where we're gonna be combining these textures. So if I select all of this, hit Control C, go back to our original mountain texture and paste that in. Uh, we've lost the frame somehow, which is no bother. Let's just add that frame back in. Uh, call it rock again, and then add it to that like, kind of rockish color. Our stylized snow, I'm just gonna select this whole frame. Let's see if that works. Oh, just selected the, just the frame. Uh, I need to select all of this guy. There we go. All of that. It's, we've lost our frame again, sad. It's okay. Usually that works, I'm not sure why that's glitching out. If you know why, post a comment in the description, tell me what's going on. Um, but it's all good, we still have our textures in here. So we've got our rock and we've got our snow. And I'm gonna bring in uh, the heat maps now. I don't need this principle BSDF there anymore. But what I do need is a, a mix shader. So I'm gonna add in this mix shader and plug that into the surface output. And let's bring in this rock, we'll add it to the top here. And let's add in the snow from down here. Uh, it's this principal BSDF and plug that into the bottom output. So as I was saying in, in the video I just released before, what this is currently doing defaulting with the, the mix shader is applying exactly 50-50 split of these two textures to your scene. If I turn the factor all the way down to zero, it's just taking just the top input. So it's just taking the rock input. And if I pull this all the way up to one, it's just taking the snowy input. So we want some kind of mix between the two of these. And this is where either noise textures come into place or you know specific heat maps that we've made come into place. So if I just drag this heat map in here, it's a black and white image that we can now plug the color of it into this factor output. Take a second to load here and you'll see this is now the wrong way. And if it's the wrong way like that, you can just flip these two. And now we've got our snow applied to just the top here and we've got our kind of rocky texture down below which looks nice. This rock looks maybe a little bit too large for the scene. And this kind of takes me to a big point here that I think I harp on a lot with beginners is you kind of have to keep an eye on the texture scale uh, for your scene. Uh, right now we kind of look like we're in like Ant-Man's world here or something like this is some huge, you know, ant hill or something with the way this rock texture is scaled. So we kind of want to scale this up so that it makes sense for the scene. And this is different for every project. You know, maybe you're going for kind of more of a diorama effect, but maybe you're not. <laughs> so. To change that, you can do that one of two ways. You can change the scaling on the texture coordinates. So let's just change this to, um, went the wrong way there. Let's change it to like something like 20 and that kind of stretches out a bit more. You'll see we're getting like a little bit of tiling here, which isn't the biggest issue for this since it's such a large scale scene. Uh, that's looking a bit better. Same deal for the snow. Actually, the snow looks decent to me. Um, so that actually looks pretty nice. We kind of have this interesting scene kind of going here and you can either do that, or if you wanted to, you can just tab into edit mode, select all, and then adjust by the UV. And one, one thing you actually notice here in edit mode, sometimes when you tab into edit mode, if you have a displacement modifier put on your scene, 
uh, it kind of defaults to, to not being on. Whereas with subdivision, you see it's still on because of this uh, little thing here. It's kind of hidden oftentimes. It took me a while to actually find this in Blender initially. Um, there's this little icon here. It kind of looks like a, a square with like a white pixel kind of selected at the top mode. And what that allows you to do is toggle display in edit mode on or off. So you'll see for the displacement modifier, it's currently toggled to be off in the edit mode. So just, you can hit that to toggle on and you'll see actually now we see what the displacement looks like. I think this is just helpful for when you're texturing things uh, because oftentimes you wanna see how it's kind of wrapping to your displaced terrain. Uh, so for this one, I can just kind of grab this and scale it up and you'll see it's actually changing the UV for the texture as well, which we don't want. So to avoid doing that, I'm gonna go into the object data properties and add in a new UV map I'm gonna call this one our textured UV map. If it allows me to do that, there we go. Texture UV, texture UV map. Okay, so what that allows me to do is have this new texture UV map. I'm just gonna hit unwrap, which will take a second there. And it is now snapped to the wrong displacement for this guy, but I'm just gonna use the uh, auto map for that one. Okay, so we're about down to our original texture for there. For these ones, I think I need to also select the same one, the auto map for it. Yes. I'm just gonna go to all these ones and just select auto map and it will just use the proper uh, UV, which is the one that was initially unwrapped with our scene. Okay, so now everything's back to normal, but we wanna actually uh, adjust the just the texture uh, UV map. So I'm gonna select our, our texture UV map here now and let's go to this guy. And now if I scale this up and down, it is not doing anything to our texture. What's happening? Well, you have to go to our shader editor. And what you're actually gonna to wanna to do is uh, where you see this mapping thing plugged in, you actually wanna add in a UV map. And instead of just using the just generic uh, UV here, you can actually select uh, the texture UV map here and plug that UV into the vector. And so now we can actually modify that UV in our UV editor. You'll see now it's changing just the rock texture, the scaling on that. And you'll see if I scale this up way too high, you'll see some very noticeable tiling of the texture, which looks a bit strange, especially from distance. That's not really how mountains look. There's a little bit more, you know, regularity to them. So I'm just gonna scale this up just a little bit here as well to kind of give us a bit more flexibility. So that's kind of the little gotchas of texturing with UVs uh, with the displacement modifiers on. Uh, it gets a little bit tricky sometimes with that. So just keep an eye out for that and you'll be all good to go. Don't worry about it. One thing I know about this rock texture here is it's looking a little bit too shiny to me. I feel like rocks don't usually look that shiny. Um, so we can actually change the roughness of this a little bit by adding in a color ramp node to this texture. I'm gonna add in this color ramp node. It'll take a second to load here. I'm just gonna bring this uh, white point down quite a bit here. So now you'll see it's looking a little bit more rocky. It's looking a little bit more like how it should, which is a bit better. Uh, we'll still see this, it's pretty blocky looking, this texture here. So I'm just gonna, uh, up the subdivisions in the viewport up a bit more here just to kind of preview what this looks like. Um, an ant crawling over there now. It's getting close to the summer months here. It's really humid outside. So we oftentimes we'll have ants kind of sneaking into the house. Uh, so there's just an ant there for a second. So I've kind of cranked up the subdivisions a lot more. Now you'll see it's looking really nice. Uh, it's, it's kind of smoothed out a lot of those jagged edges and everything is looking pretty cool in our scene here, I think. So now let's just kind of, I'm just gonna turn this off because I know how this looks like now and I'm gonna put the render to something like five. So you have even higher subdivisions. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is actually add in like some kind of water or some kind of lake to this basin here. And to do that, I'm just gonna add in a, a new plane and we'll scale this up quite a bit here. So that it takes up like most of our scene. And then it's currently not visible there. So let's just pull it up a little bit on the Z axis. So that's kind of like, looks cool there scaled up maybe even a little bit more. And I'm just gonna bring this down just a little bit. So it's there. Okay, so that looks really nice. So we're gonna make this our lake. I'm gonna rename this and let's do a little bit of organization here. So all these planes that are all of our mountains, so I'm just gonna add them to a new collection by hitting M and then typing in mountain. And then these are all added to a new collection. So we've got this mountain here. And we have our lake that I wanna kind of mess around with a bit here and kind of add in a little bit more to our scene. I'm also now actually gonna flip over to cycles just to kind of get a better idea for what this is gonna look like. I tend to use cycles because I think it looks a little bit more photorealistic with these scenes. And I have a GPU that's really solid, so I'm gonna switch to GPU compute. 
And so I'm not fighting noise too much in my viewport. I'm gonna turn on the optics denoising, which I have with my latest NVIDIA GPU that I'm using. Uh, so that works really well. And you can start the sample at whatever you prefer. I'm just gonna have it at 32 there. So that's looking really nice. And as I move around, you'll see it kind of stops fighting through noise as much, which is pretty great, especially when we're now gonna be adding in uh, some water to our scene here. So let's do that right now. So I'm gonna add in a new texture and let's call this water. I'm gonna add in a couple displacement cuts to this here, just so we can have some something to work with. Add in another uh, little subdivision here of just one, and add in a displacement to this, just because we're gonna add in like some kind of ocean ripples to this guy. So I'm gonna click on the sliders here, and then instead of image removing, I'm gonna use clouds, and you'll see that looks really strange. Um, but if I Ooh, if I pull the scale down to like 0.1 and the strength is like extremely high, let's pull this down to like point, like 0 0.02. This is looking, if I zoom way in on this, uh, it looks a bit more like an ocean. It's kind of hard to tell from this high up here, but if I shade that smooth, that looks really nice. It's kind of like how an ocean should look. And now what I'm going to do is add in uh, a bit of like the ocean look to this guy here. So if I add in transmission of one, and then let's pull the roughness down just a little bit there, and we'll pull this guy over. Let's make the base color like a little bit more like bluish to it. This looks nice. And I'm gonna add in a, a principal, or sorry, a volume absorption node to this. And put that on the volume. Make this like a blue color. This kind of just allows us to have with depth a bit more blue to the the water, which will look nice. And then uh, you can actually add in, see like some to the bump here to really affect this a bit more. You can add in like a, a noise texture if you're choosing. I'll just use like, let's say a generic noise for now. And we'll do a, a bump node, plug the factor into the height and then plug the normal into the normal. And let's just pipe just this guy into our scene, just the noise texture, because we're gonna have to turn the scale, I think like way up here. Yeah, let's crank this way up to like something very high so it kind of looks more like water ripples. Maybe even higher. Let's see, I'm at 5,000 now for this guy. Um, and now if I go to there, it's looking a bit extreme, you'll see, because the bump is way too high. So let's pull this bump back quite a bit. It's looking a bit nicer. You can kind of distort this a bit. Let's turn the bump way down. It's looking pretty nice. Okay, so we've got this decent looking lake there and for the background, I'm actually going to use uh, like a background I've got. I want to find an image where the sun is kind of in the same angle as uh, our HDRI was. Just so it kind of matches up a bit one to one there. We kind of have the angle generally looking like how it should. So I'll link to this uh, in the description as well so you can find this guy. But let's use, uh, let's see here. I like how this one looks. So I'm going to check emit and then I'm going to import that image as a plane. And we'll scale this guy way up here. And I want to change the uh, visibility of the shadows. I'm just going to turn that off so that the light is still passing through our plane. I often like to go to top mode and kind of align the plane of our sky with the plane of the camera so that it's not distorting in kind of weird ways. I'm just going to pull this way back behind all of our mountains so it's not cropping anything off. And just bring this down a bit here. And that's looking decent, but the it's a little bit dark for the scene. So if I crank this brightness up a bit, let's go up a little bit higher maybe to like seven. Looks decent. We can probably do better. It looks good, but we can do better. Um, I'm gonna add in a little bit of orangish hue to our uh, sun lamp that's coming through here. And maybe just dial back the H dry just a hair so it's not as bright there. It's kind of like a later afternoon haze to our image, which looks pretty nice. Uh, this lake maybe needs to be scaled up a bit more. 
Let's like rotate this around and pull this all the way back. Looks pretty decent. Looks good to me. So let's add in a little bit of haze now to this. What I like to do is for that is add in a large plane that fills like most of the scene here. So I'm just gonna pull up this huge, or large cube rather, fills up the whole scene. And I'm just gonna pull that back a bit. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna name this to our volume. Volume. Add in a new material, and we're just gonna delete the principal BSDF from it for now. Oops, do not wanna delete everything. Come back, come back. Where'd she go? Okay, well, it's just... <laughs> somehow disappeared from my viewport. There we go. I'm just gonna delete just the principled BSDF, add in a principled volume instead. And I'm gonna plug the volume into the volume output. And you'll see it's incredibly dense, uh, which we do not want it to be that dense. We're just gonna change the visibility so it's wired in the viewport so we can see our scene here still. If I pull that forward a bit, it's better. And I'm gonna pull up the color to like kind of an orangish tint to it. So it's kind of that like nice atmospheric haze. And now we're going to have a bit more depth to our scene. Kind of get this really nice atmospheric haziness to our scene that we didn't really have before, which is looking pretty nice like that. I'm really enjoying how that looks. I think that's like starting to add a bit more dimension to it. It kind of shows you the scale of everything. There's kind of this like fade as you go off into the distance there, which is looking really nice. Maybe I come back to our sky and crank the brightness even more on that. This is again like kind of a pull and push effect here. So that's looking decent to me. I think it looks nice. Again, this is looking like really pixelated, but once we actually render it out, I've got the displacement set much higher. So it's gonna look really nice once we actually go to rendering this scene. Um, so that's, I think, good for now. And just to add a little bit more detail to this, let's actually maybe take this like one step further and actually add in like, so there's not such a harsh fall off if I uh, let's just switch back to EV for a second here um, and let me just show you what's going on here so oh, this volume is crazy um, I'm gonna turn off the volume for a second and let's actually just uh, disconnect this volume absorption because you can see it's kind of affecting a little bit too much uh, the scene here okay so there is currently like a very harsh fall off between the water and like kind of the beach area, if you will, of the lake. So what I like to do oftentimes for this is to kind of blend like a darker version. So as if it's like the waves has been, have been like lapping against the surface of this uh, mountain. And to do that, let me actually just uh, grab this whole guy here. And we're just gonna hit Control C and Control V and duplicate it. And I just duplicated just the frame, which is useless for what I'm doing. There we go. I duplicated all these guys. I'm gonna add this to a frame and let's call this like rock dark or something, right? So this is gonna be like our darker beach kind of color here. I'm just gonna kind of turn this to like a darker color. Oops. Uh, okay, um, so let me pull this guy up here. And like I was talking about the other tutorial, you can use uh, vertex painting to actually do this. Um, I'm also gonna wanna use the same UV map from before for consistency's sake. Plug that UV into the, uh, is that in the right place? No. It needs to be in the scale output, right? No, it's, sorry, in the vector output, there we go. Okay, so I've got this plugged in, and what I wanna do is actually just darken this rock texture. So to do that, I'm actually just gonna add a bright contrast node to this rock here. And let me just connect this into the output. And let's just bring the brightness down a little bit, just like one stop, like 0.1, negative 0.1 down. Um, and just to show you the difference, let's jockey back and forth between these two rocks. If I go to this one, You'll see it's kind of like a darker gray. This one's like kind of almost a, a brownish color. And we're gonna blend these two together. And the way that I'm gonna do that is just the same way as before with a mix shader. I'm gonna plug this into the mix shader output and plug this in there. And I'm gonna be controlling this factor by actually using a vertex color. So I'm gonna go over here and make a new vertex color. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just keep it as COL for now, which is fine. And I'm gonna add in the vertex color node over here and add that COL to it. And the way to do this, I'm gonna use a separate RGB node and plug this in, the color into the image, and then just connect the red output to the factor here. And you'll see this is just gonna be using just one of our textures, which is using currently the, the bottom one, but we wanna kind of blend these two together. And so the way I'm gonna do that is actually to kind of paint the darker texture just around this rim here by going into vertex paint mode. 
And uh, let's just change everything to red first of all by hitting paint and then set vertex colors. So now it's set everything to red. And if I hit control and then kind of click around, you can see I'm kind of able to paint kind of the darker texture in uh, to this like layer here. And if I snap off, you'll see it's got them flipped. So again, I just flip the shaders here. And you'll see now it's kind of got this like darker texture kind of painted in there. Maybe that's a little bit too dark. Maybe I just pull this up just a little bit more. So that looks like a little bit more natural, I think, personally. And let me just change this fall off a bit by pulling the strength down just a hair and kind of like extending this maybe just a little bit higher up there. So as if this is like the water levels receded just a little bit. And that looks like pretty good to me, I think. And maybe just bring this brightness down just a hair more. So that's looking pretty cool, I think. Yeah, looks nice. So let's switch back over to Cycles and see what this looks like in yay old Cycles. So that looks much nicer. You kind of have this more like natural fade. If you remember how it looked before, it was like kind of a little bit harsh there, but just kind of having that subtle change. I mean, again, these are like pretty subtle details, but that's what really takes it to the next step and makes it look more photorealistic. But having that little extra uh, kind of blurring to the layers, it, it adds so much more detail, so much more life to the scene. Uh, and while I'm out of here, let me just actually plug this back in uh, to this guy. There we go. So now we actually have our snow again. Um, so I'm actually not liking how this is looking. Maybe I actually want to make this like ice or something. Uh, so there's actually a really cool ice texture in in uh, Blender Kit. I know I just took you through the ordeal of setting up the water shader here. But again, sometimes we, we spend some time to do stuff and you just kind of have to realize like, oh, maybe this isn't working. Let's just kind of change this out to something else. Okay, so I've loaded it back up here. Let me just load up the ice texture again, and now we see it. <laughs> okay, that's great. And let me go to rendered mode for a second here so I can see what we're working with. And I'm gonna add in, there's like a kind of a cool like reflective ice texture. Some of these are a little bit too stylized, but this one's pretty nice. This one's really nice. I think this kind of like cracked ice one. So let's kind of work with that one. I'm gonna actually turn off the displacements in here. I'm just gonna delete these, the subdivision and the displacement. And just with my uh, lake selected, I can hit cracked ice onto it. Take a second to load up there. And there we go. We've got this kind of cool cracked ice on our scene. Looks decent to me. Kind of explore some of these other ones here. Again, just have some fun with this. Uh, you know, just never lock yourself into one thing. Just kind of see what works and what doesn't. Sometimes it'll just like, again, happy accident. Something will just kind of like work for your scene and it'll be kind of surprising, but it'll work out. I think it's a little bit too blue. So I'm just going to turn the saturation down just a little bit. So it's kind of more like shiny white glass. So that looks pretty good. Let me just turn up the transmission just a little bit more here. So we're kind of a little bit see-through on this ice. I got some nice sheen from the sun on it too, which I think looks pretty cool. And yeah, I think that's uh, it's pretty decent. This mountain's maybe like clipping a little bit weirdly. This one is. Okay, that looks pretty cool. So yeah, for render settings, um, you know, when you're adding in volumetrics, uh, I think it's helpful to have as many samples as possible because you're going to be fighting through some noise otherwise. Uh, you can actually set your samples automatically. Uh, if you go to the performance tab and you can check on this auto tile size, it'll actually select the uh, optimum tile size for your GPU threads uh, to have that run and generate your scene, which I think will work pretty well for this. So we can just set auto tile size. And I'll just do, let's say like, probably like 800 samples or something for this guy. Let's just try that. And I can render this out and I'll be back with you in just a sec after this is finished rendering. And hey, we're back. This looks pretty cool. You know, we could do a little bit more with this though. So let's actually go into the compositing tab in Blender. I'm gonna use the nodes and hit Control and Shift and click on this guy. And we'll now be able to see it uh, in our compositor here while we're editing. Uh, I'm just gonna do some editing in here instead of in Photoshop. Uh, just to keep it nice and free in Blender. You can hit fit to make this fit to your screen. You can also zoom out just a little bit here so it's not too zoomed in. So there's a couple things we can actually do to uh, make this look a little bit hazier, a little bit mistier. And what I'm actually gonna do for that is add in a uh, filter node. And you can just add a kind of like a soften, like almost like an Orton effect to it, uh, which is kind of like this like soft glow. Um, if I turn this factor down a bit, you'll see what that's doing, that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna add in uh, 
just the filter node itself again. And I like to sharpen up on the other hand. Uh, we don't need the factor as high. Let's just sharpen up just a little bit. That's good. And now let's add in the glare node. And what I like to do here is, <laughs> it looks a bit extreme, but you can add in kind of like a fog glow to your scene. So you can see kind of like the glow on top of the mountains, which looks pretty nice. And you can modify this by using like the mix factor here. So if I turn that up to 0.1, you know, it's a little bit less intense. I can bring the threshold down. So it's kind of like even more heavenly glow to the scene. Okay, that looks decent. Let's just turn this down a little bit. I think it's a little bit extreme. <laughs> and that looks decent to me. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. I think, um, you know, you kind of get this like very bright looking, it's a little bit video game looking here, at least kind of just the way it's textured it. Um, but it's still kind of nice. I think it's got like a nice effect to it. And it was really quick and easy to do this. Um, I just kind of wanted to walk you through the process here and just show you what's possible with World Creator and with Blender to make these scenes, you know, in just a couple minutes. This was about a, you know, a 30 minute or so tutorial here. And we were able to make something really cool uh, with just a couple clicks. It's just the power of that procedural workflow in World Creator. And then the power of Blender to work very quickly to just kind of generate a scene like this by moving things around and, and building out the, the scene. So I, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this one. Again, if you can help me out here, that would be awesome by leaving in the comment section an idea that you have for a future tutorial. I've got a couple that I've already kind of put down in a list uh, from what you've commented on, on my past couple of videos here. So I'm kind of working through those. One of the ones I was hoping to do is actually a, a time-lapse one that someone suggested uh, using the physical starlight and atmosphere. Uh, I've worked on a couple of videos recently where I kind of have a, a nighttime time-lapse that changes to like a sunrise or something or vice versa which looks really nice. So I might tackle that as well. And just a friendly reminder to those who are on Patreon and those who are looking to join, this file is gonna be up there momentarily uh, for download and you'll be able to access that uh, and mess around with it if you wanted to just work off of the already completed scene. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe if you're not already, share with a friend, bring them into the Blender universe, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.